Thanks for watching the Edison Prep Parent Partnership video. Our goal today is to talk to you about how to help us maximize your student's SAT or ACT score. So first of all, why prep for the SAT or ACT? Your GPA and did you take hard classes in high school is and should be the first most important factor when applying to college, but the second most important factor is the SAT or the ACT, whichever one you choose to send. Uh, it's the only common factor across all high schools, and various scholarships, such as the Zell Miller Hope Scholarship, have minimum requirements for it. Uh, at other places, getting a minimum certain score, such as Auburn, will have a guaranteed admission and guaranteed scholarship level at a certain GPA and ACT or SAT cut point. Um, unlike a bad grade freshman or sophomore or junior year in school, you can retake the SAT or ACT, which is calming to students. Uh, and it is a number that if your student has had some oopses on the GPA front earlier in their high school career, it's a sliding scale with GPA and SAT, ACT. So if they have a higher GPA, they can possibly get away with a slightly lower score. But if they have some ground they need to make up due to some GPA oopses, they can use this as a tool to strengthen their application and make up for that. Now, one important thing, since you're seeing this video, Obviously, you've signed up for the class already. It's important to sign up early on for an optimal testing location. Uh, for being an air quotes standardized test, it is unfortunate how suboptimal certain testing locations and how non-standardized the locations are at various places. Because this video is a static video, uh, we would encourage you to reach out to us because as time goes on, certain places offer it, certain places don't. Uh, but generically, um, it's good to avoid any for-profit universities. Um, they often are not as organized and not high school classroom teachers. Um, and there's other places where they will do things like clear a student's calculator memory or not time it correctly or not have clocks in the room, any number of things. So selfishly, we want to protect your student's score increase. So if you ask us, um, also, we give it to students the first day of class. Uh, we can tell them where to register. Obviously, all tutors recommend the same rough uh, number of locations, so those ones tend to fill first. So it is important as soon as possible, as soon as the class starts, if not earlier, to go ahead and get registered. Now, it's also important to bring the right tool for the job to the test and to each class. If you'll notice from left to right here, um, there's a, there are a variety of calculators. There's the TI Inspire CX, which is legal on the test, but ironically, all the buttons you use the most, such as multiplying, dividing, subtracting, are teeny tiny. And then the buttons you don't need are very large, plus it has a keyboard, which is not needed. It's very clunky. And even talented tutors like my wife and I, who get top 1% scores, would struggle to get a decent score with the Inspire. We like to joke that it inspires low scores. Furthermore, there's a second model not shown in the slide called the Inspire CAS rather than CX that is actually illegal on the ACT. And it's heartbreaking because kids think that proctors will not enforce that rule and then they get their calculator snatched by the proctor and have to take the entire test with no calculator. It's very regrettable. The second calculator, TI-30X, um, one of my tutor friends in Atlanta jokes that it's called that because the maximum score you can get with it on the ACT is a 30. It is challenging. It has trigonometry, but it lacks graphing and it lacks so many of the advanced features, especially given how hard these tests are to finish in time. It's important to get one of the three calculators on the right. Now, if you already have a TI-83 or TI-84+, plus, the black and white kind, it is fine. Um, if there's a younger sibling who currently has the color one that you see on the right, you should have your students trade. Because the higher up the score spectrum you go, the more important it is to have specifically the TI-84+, plus CE. There are some advanced features that are built in that come straight from the factory on the TI-84 plus CE that at the top end of the score spectrum where times are premium and difficult ones are a premium, it helps your students slice through those ones much more quickly in a way that the 83 and the regular 84 cannot. Now, the most important slide in this entire deck is, is very important to check in weekly on your students' homework completion. A lot of students we tutor do what's called a hybrid approach where they take the class before the first test and then they, in advance, before the calendar gets booked up, have reserved a number of, a much smaller amount of private sessions for fine-tuning purposes. 
And many times, not every time, when students come to that first session, we get the look that this cute little dog has because as we're opening the book and realizing, wow, uh, definitely 100% of the homework did not happen. Um, sometimes none of the homework happened. You can double, triple, quadruple, quintuple your investment in this class if you simply once a week for five minutes check in and say, hey, here's the homework that was posted to the Edison Prep website. Show it to me. That we ask all, all parents. Some do, some don't. And it leads to a wide variety of score increases across the class. So if you help us, there are very few surprises on test day if you can help us ensure homework completion. It's also important to attend all the mock tests. There's a baseline mock uh, at the beginning of the class that some students actually take earlier. And there's also one built in midway. If your student has a conflict with either of those two mocks, email us. Every single Sunday, some Saturdays, we have a mock SAT or an ACT, sometimes both. So if you give us a little heads up, there's a very, very good chance that there's not one, but there's multiple possible alternate options that they could take instead. Happy to do so, and we always have a couple extra seats open in our mocks for that reason to allow for flexibility, since students might have church or a track meet or other obligations. Now, it's also important to attend all the classes, if at all possible. Um, to Hopefully, you signed up for a class where there were no uh, conflicts. If your student does, for some reason, end up missing a class, oftentimes they do have a classmate in the class, and we encourage them to copy notes, at a minimum, from their classmate. We also upload homework to the edisonprep.com website on in each individual class's page a day or two after class. Additionally, some students will choose to schedule a private session to make up that content and and then we're able to let them hit the ground running right when they get back to class. Now, back to the homework completion, the homework expectation is to do the homework in the bul the bulb spiral book that we wrote as a company. Uh, that is a, a smaller amount of homework, usually 20 or, or so minutes a week in the spiral book. And then there's one full length time test that is assigned each week. So it takes about three hours to take and then another hour to do and review if you're doing 100% of the assigned homework. If you look at the image at the bottom here, the joke we make with parents all the time is if Charles Schwab had a new button on their website where you could log in once a week and click a big red button and it would add $1,000 to your balance, it'd be a very popular button. Given how much merit aid can be on the line, financial aid, otherwise, or just admission to schools, the most profitable five minutes a week you will spend as a parent is making sure that 100% of the homework has been completed. Your student should also plan on taking the test twice as a, ideally a one-two one, two punch of consecutive tests. The tests are offered seven times each year. For the ACT, it's mostly every other month with the exception of September or October. And with the ACT, uh, or with the SAT, it varies. Um, there's a batch in the fall and then a little break between December and March and then a batch in the spring. The national average kid in suburbia takes it about 2.6 times, and that's because about, about half take it twice and half take it three times. You're allowed to take it as many times as you need to, uh, but from a momentum standpoint, if you can look at your student's overall junior year schedule and see where two consecutive test dates are as close to as possible as possible, it leads to the best results so students don't atrophy or get rusty. Now, how wide is the variation in score increases in a given class, it is very wide. Even at the halfway point in our most recent SAT and ACT classes, there was an over 150 point gap and an over seven point gap in the score increases. And that was on the midway mock. It only gets bigger as time goes on. Every student gets exactly the same tools in class because they're all in the same classroom, but it's how much work they put in outside of class on those timed homework tests that makes 100% of the variation. So was there a 250 point gap between the highest improver and lowest improver on our most recent set of SAT classes? There absolutely was. And was there over a nine point gap between the highest and lowest improver on the most recent batch of ACT classes? It's pretty standard. Is the average around four points for the group and the uh, slightly over 100 points for uh, the SAT? So four for ACT and over 100 for the SAT? Absolutely. But there is a wide, wide variation. So again, if you can help us with the homework completion, there are very few surprises on score release day. So our goal is to avoid surprises. The three-legged stool that 
holds up your score is your student being engaged in sessions, always bringing their calculator, their pencils, both of their books, arriving on time, coming to all the mock tests, and then completing the homework. If those three legs are there, then we're pretty good. Please read out, reach out to us if you have any questions. We're always happy to answer. Uh, that Our number's there, or you can email us. And we hope that you enjoy this video, and we are looking forward to helping your students raise their scores.